Hello everybody, I'm back with another video for you today, and I've got a pretty cool deck for you. This is a Hemelfart deck. I did want to try Swarm and actually make it pretty decent, uh, and I was inspired by Azakov who made a pretty damn similar deck to this. Uh, I changed it a bit, added a few cards, took a few cards out, um, and the real theme, the idea, is that you're playing Hemelfart along with a lot of crime cards and a lot of cards that synergize with crimes. Uh, you're thinking basically cut up lackeys and bare knuckle brawlers uh, and both of those are conveniently being pulled out by portal and you can also get more of the lackeys with horse and senior usually not using the tribute ability just using his you know immediate deploy and of course all of these guys are synergizing whenever you play a crime so we have quite a few crime cards as well now azakar's deck does have more crimes and it is a little bit more focused on that uh, approach i have gone in the direction of trying to swarm a lot as well and really pay off from a lot of the swarming. So uh, with that in mind, I'm playing two Bone Talismans. I had one and Triss before, but Triss is a bit unreliable in this deck because you have lots of different spells. The opponent might even play their own, uh, and that can mean you won't get Bone Talisman every time. So a bit of a problem there. Otherwise, we also have Yennefer uh, to get all the value when you've swarmed the board up. We have, of course, Sacred Flame, which works very well with putting down a ton of these Zealots that you can get from Inquisitor and your leader. We also have Procession of Penance, of course, to pay off uh, the, the amount of Zealots that you're going to have. And your main as another swarming card, which works as Sacred Pr Flame, which is pretty cool, I think. So a bit of a mixture of a crime and swarm, and I think it works pretty well, although I was having some difficulties against King of Beggar when I was on blue coin, as he can just usually win on even if you don't have a very good hand. Uh, and other decks were a little bit problematic, like Gurnacora if you get bled, stuff like that. Deck is definitely vulnerable to bleeding, so you want to push as hard as you can in round one, potentially using Portal a lot of the time uh, to really push, uh, and make sure you can win the round if possible, if not, at least don't lose on even. We do have Freak Show as well, I forgot to mention, but he's in there for a bit of damage and removal, as well as the Borsodi Brothers to make sure you have spenders for the money that you're going to get through your crimes, and through... Uh, you know, all that good stuff. So the deck's pretty fun and pretty decent, I think. Probably King of Beggars is stronger, although this one is surprisingly good, and it does beat King of Beggars, I think, if you're uh, not, if you don't end up losing round one on even, which, you know, occasionally will happen, often will not, so. I was enjoying the deck a lot, do feel free to try it out, uh, or try Adzikor's version out, which you may be able to find online somewhere, um, which is pretty similar to this one. Either way, uh, let's jump into a couple of games as we always do and see how this one plays. Alright, we're going to be up against the King of Beggars. Let's see what we can do. We're on the red coins, so that's a, bit, a, bit, uh, a little bit safer for us. Okay, with this hand, what do we want? Well, we have some crimes. We have a bare knuckle ruler, which isn't too great, but we can maybe just play him this round, I suppose. I don't think I want two congregation, as it's a bit... You know, we want to play those later on if we can. Um, Payday's a bit awkward, potentially. So I'll get rid of that one as well. Portal is powerful. You can either use that next round or in this round, potentially, to push. And I do want to win the round, ideally, so we can just go to round three without using our good cards. So I think I'm going to play it, and maybe even avoid playing the, the Bare Knuckle Brawler. It does mean that Horson, you know, can kind of wreck us a little bit. Although he has money, so that's not too much of an issue. Should be okay, I think. Could probably actually play our other Intimidate unit here as well. Because we have a bit of space. They've gone with some pretty low tempo opener plays. We can get that guy down and then we'll be able to commit some crimes. Probably Congregation is going to be the first one that we play. We want to get as much value as we can from this Intimidate stuff. We can probably even play... Horse and Senior as well, to really, really you know, be intimidating. And that'll give us some synergy potentially with the Lackey as well, which is always nice. But let's go with that Congregation first. Get all these points. Criminals and Zealots. That's, that's a pretty appropriate name for the deck, I would say. Lots of stuff going on. And we can probably go with, with Sini onto one of these zealots and then start start being criminal. We're pretty far ahead. They're going with some low tempo plays, and we managed to go you know pretty far ahead with the Ponta, uh, not with the Ponta, with the uh, with the portal, I should say. Probably our lackey is going to die here, but you know it's not the end of the world. We'll go with the uh, 
That would be awesome now. If this uh, isn't dealt with, then I mean, obviously, we're going to completely destroy him with the crimes because these bonded units get a lot of value. It'd be great if the uh, the brawlers also had bonded, but they don't, unfortunately. But, you know, Swindle coming up, Dip and the Pontar coming up, and that's going to be pretty much enough to secure the round here. We have effectively five Intimidate units. Two of them are getting us two points per Intimidate, so... That's pretty crazy. Yeah, it looks like we're just going to kind of roll over him now. Let's go for a Swindle. A ton of points. Okay, nice. Six ahead. And we actually have more money in the bank as well. We high rolled the Swindle, so six coins. We can go up to nine even if we want to, which is pretty, pretty powerful. And the dip in the Pontar coming up is not too bad either. So we're actually managing to bully out King of Beggars. He didn't have Siggy. That's kind of why we're managing to be so far ahead. The Siggy is definitely important in terms of surviving. Interesting, he didn't actually kill the Lackey. That's probably not good for him. We'll definitely go ahead and play the dip. That'll get us ahead again. Nine in the bank. So, you know, we can even consider dropping out of the round now and just keeping the coins as carryover. But most likely we'll end up playing the Freak Show next and start spending the money. Sounds good to me. And we should just be winning on even, which is really, really, really nice. I don't mind spending all the money, but uh, yeah, I don't think we should. I don't think we particularly need to. I guess we may as well. It's only one coin and we're probably going to dry pass anyway. So we'll lose that extra coin. So I think we can use the money here. And there's going to be the pass, pretty much forced, we're so far ahead. And we've managed to hold on to Sacred Flame, which is really, really good news. We can use that alongside our leader and Yen, and hopefully Inquisitor, for just a huge amount of points. And taking the dry pass, I think, is probably going to be a good idea. We'll get rid of Sur Raiders, they're a bit awkward sometimes. And probably dip in the Ponta. At this point, we're looking for the Swarm Synergies more than the Criminals, because we've already played Portal and Horson. Let's take the pass. We should be pretty favoured in the long run. We also have Borsodi. He can kill the opponent's Borsodi if we're worried about that. That's kind of the main threat in King of Beggars. It can kill all of your Zealots, potentially. Oh, and he plays Tunnel Drill as well now. Unless he has Renew, we're actually very happy about that. Because it's going to mean Sacred Flame will uh, stay around. And get us a ton of value. But okay, again, cut up Lackey, no crimes in hand, so not very good. Sewer Raiders, I don't particularly want either. Alright, hand is looking okay. We have Payday, which might be a bit awkward to use, but we do have Bosodi, so we can maybe set it up if we need to. There's a Siggy. So we may as well start with the Sacred Flame, kind of no reason not to. And I'm probably going to actually play all my Hemelfart charges as well, I think. Reason for that being, if they do decide to remove this with a, with a artifact removal, we want to get the value immediately on our leader. Probably we should save the last charge just so that we can uh, play Congregation, but we'll play two charges there um, to get the value on the Sacred Flame. Adriano, the Mink, right? I mean, that's actually kind of a scary card to play, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but I don't think we're really going to kill that. It costs them a lot of money, so it's not really... It's not that amazing, right? It's not that amazing. Let's go with Congregation now, and we can probably also just play this. Doesn't seem to be a reason not to. Unless we're worried about Epidemic or something. This isn't actually even boosting when we play these spells, with Bone Talisman and whatnot. So that's not too bad. As you see, we've got an absolutely massive board, and it's only going to get bigger with the Inquisitor. I'm kind of row stacking myself, so we're probably going to have to play Borsodi on front, but... Ah, maybe not. It really allows us... Gives us some room, which is kind. Let's play one Borsodi brother then. And then we can go Inquisitor and spam another four dudes, which will get the Sacred Flame buff. Very powerful. It's really nice having Portal and Sacred Flame, because they give you, like, two ways to win a round. You don't only have the Swarm Synergy, you also have crimes and that's typically the problem with this deck is if you know if you can only win run one round it's not exactly very good right 
But here we're able to do more than that, so that's good. Okay, let's go with the Inquisitor now. Yeah, we might struggle a little bit to activate the Payday, but not really the end of the world, I suppose. This car's a bit clunky sometimes. Still got Boss Odie to potentially set it up, but he might end up dying or being stolen or whatever, so... You know. Philippa actually going to come down now, okay. So I think we can probably Yennefer, it's not really going to get better for us, it will only get worse if they, you know, use the Inquisitor themselves, so we'll play the Yen now. We're very, very far ahead. I mean, seven points up, plus we have an extra card, so we should be at a pretty decent spot here. As long as nothing crazy happens. I guess Caesar Blitzen would be kind of bad if they have it for us. That's about it, I suppose. This payday being a two-point card is, is also not good, but it is what it is. I think I'm going to wait on the, uh, the Borsodi, because we need to find a target that can actually allow us to payday, if we're looking for max value, that is. So we'll maybe save that for our last play and just miss a couple of Bone Talisman points. I don't think it's the end of the world, really. And in fact, these guys... Yeah, okay. That's nice for us. We get some payday value on those, <laughs> conveniently. Okay. So we can payday and have the Borsodi as our kind of, you know, just getting us some pretty easy points at the end. We're ahead right now and a card up, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Freak show, not really doing anything to be honest. I'm going to win, win by a pretty considerable amount of points here. It's running a bit of a weird version, I guess, of, uh, of the old King of Beggars. But yeah, we're winning by a lot, obviously. Kind of want to see how much by... I feel kind of bad. 60? Not too bad. We were a card up. Probably winning that a card uh, on even cards, though. Um, as long as your flame doesn't get removed. Pretty nice. Let's jump into another game and see if we can win again. And another King of Beggars opponent. Alright. We'll flip the coins this time around. So blue coin, we'll see if we can... Uh, you know, still take the win, maybe. With the, with the roll reversal, but okay, let's get rid of our four drops. Of course, not going to be too great. And I guess we can keep Bone Talisman. We might end up using it, actually, in this round one. Swindle, I don't think I want. Right now. Don't have Portal, which is a bit annoying. That's kind of the card you want on blue coin, or red coin, even, just to, to push round one. So instead, we might have to be kind of a bit vulnerable to bleeding in round two, and, and try to get out of round one as safely as possible. Let's go with Congregation to start, we kind of have to. Things get a bit dicey here if they go Siggy. Got a lot of points to work with, potentially. Summoning Circle's pretty low tempo, so that'll hopefully give us a, an option to actually get out the round. And I think I like going with the Horse and Senior here to just, you know, get some more points. I don't really care about having Zealots right now. Not too important. We are 19 up, so that's pretty good. And the real objective is just to get out of this round. Ideally, if we can make them use a couple of, you know, if we can make them go a couple of cards down, it will make us very hard to be bled. So, slamming tempo is not necessarily a bad idea here. Okay. I think I actually like going with Bone Talisman here. It's not the best card. We don't really want to play any crimes right now, of course. Um, and it's going to make it harder for him to actually kill the horse and senior, which he'll probably want to be doing. Seems like he might be playing kind of a no unit thing, but I don't think we mind that. Honestly, it's kind of good if he has no units, we can even get more value from Yennefer if he doesn't have any board presence himself. So I'm pretty content with how this round is going right now. Which other executioner will come down, but I think now we're going to get out the round. If they can't take it in one, which they, you know, maybe can because they have the summoning circle and whatnot. And we're going to be in a great spot. We'll see if they have the points necessary to take it. The bleed is going to be a bit scary, but we didn't really use too much in this round one. We still have Sacred Flame and Portal, both of which will be very good as anti-bleed measures in round two for us to use. He seems a bit stumped on what to do here. Wants to get 21 points, it's, it's very possible that he 
can. Looks like the tribute is going to be paid. Okay. And the fence is going to come out as well. Okay. So that's going to be enough spending all the coins. But, you know, we didn't get too much here from him. Which is a bit annoying. But this is no carryover following us to round two. And something circle's gone as well, which is a good thing. So now we just got to survive the push. The round two push that's coming for us, presumably. I could have maybe slammed a bit more tempo round one there to become a little bit less bleedable. Maybe I should have done that. But hard to know if it would have worked out. Let's get rid of Payday. This car's kind of clunky. Maybe I should be taking it out of the deck, honestly. Um, and probably one dip in the Pontar as well. It's going to be a bit awkward. The double Lackey isn't too great. A bit slow and they can get removed quite easily, but... Yeah, not having either... Uh, you know, not having our good stuff here is going to be a bit of a problem, but, okay, Freak Show, not too scary, we can dip in the Pontar on that. After heal it up, presumably, we can uh, maybe dip him in again, <laughs> if they do go for the heal. But yeah, we don't have Portal or Sacred Flame, which is maybe a blessing in disguise, because we'll be able to use them in round 3, hopefully, but uh, a, little bit, a little bit scary, to be honest. So we could go for another dip. I kind of don't mind it. And then use Borsodi to kill stuff as well after. Um, oh, did I get rid of the dip? I did. Oops. Oops. That might not have been the best idea, to be honest. Well, we can probably play Clown then. And spend this money, I suppose. The lackeys are going to be bad is, is one issue. You know. We'll give Clown bleeding, I guess, and kill the Borsodi boy. Really important to get rid of him, otherwise you can kill all your guys with you know, relative ease. We'll see what we can do here. Oh, it's going to be a sword, actually. Okay. <laughs> okay, he likes his, uh, he likes the clowns. Let's just start playing cut-up lackeys then, I guess. Why not? Just throw these guys out. Meat shields. Maybe spending all the money was wrong, because now I can't kill with Borsodi as easily. It is what it is. We can go with Swindle, and we will do that soon. It's just kind of awkward. These clowns aren't very good for him even, right? Because he has to waste some points. Waste the bleeding points if he wants to do stuff, really. Yeah, I guess another lackey is fine. I mean, we're just kind of biding our time, really. These cars are not great. We get them out. No. He's playing some uh, some pretty decent cards. We'll see how we do here. We might be using the Yennefer for damage, honestly. If he kills all my stuff. Instead of for the boost, and that would be pretty fun. But I don't know if... Eh, it might not be right. We'll see. Lots of money. Okay, you're going to be a renegade coming down. Alright. So I don't mind just going Swindle here, and then maybe using the end for damage. It's going to make us like, life awkward if we have nothing on the board, I think, so... We'll do that. We can also kill Clown with Bosodi potentially. Or clear up everything, really, with that, if we don't want to go Yen. I mean, maybe we do go Yen, to be honest. It looks pretty good. Removing Clown and whatnot. We do need some kind of finisher value, whether it's Yen or the uh, Bone Talisman or whatever, though, so... Kind of have to keep that in mind. Okay. Well, this is interesting. We could go Vosodi. Could also go Yen. I think I'm going to go Yen. It's like pretty good value on her. It's not really going to get better than that most of the time. And I think we're a bit, you know, we're being pressured here pretty hard. Just used a Renew, didn't we? So. Good cards are definitely being used. And now we can maybe think about trying to rush ahead of him, actually. Um... Definitely isn't playing too much tempo here. 
is interesting. And having the extra card would be very nice for us. Hmm. Okay, well. Jermaine isn't too useful unless we get Sacred Flame, in which case it's pretty strong. But Sodi is honestly probably the worst in terms of later on, so I guess we play him now. We can kill the Clown. Uh, we can actually also kill the Caleb. I think we do. Yeah, I'm also going to use a leader charge to stay ahead, I think. Yeah. That's probably important. We have two coins, so not too much. So right now we're looking okay. Looking like we're probably getting a card here. We've managed to kind of uh, be a bit annoying with all of our spells and lack of units. And yeah. Should be looking okay. We'll see though, they still have some very powerful cards potentially. Siggy, Philippa. The Borsodi brothers are still around in their deck, so that's something we should be a bit worried about. But okay, we're just going to take a win. Looks like they gave up the card and didn't get enough from it. Or maybe not. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Who knows whether that was a forfeit or not. Either way, hopefully that showcases the deck a little bit and what it has the potential to do. It's definitely a fun one. I don't, wouldn't say it's the strongest by any means, um, but Swarm is a pretty interesting art type and pretty fun to play in. Not too bad in this form, although not the best either. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys. Do feel free, of course, to subscribe for more videos as always, and I'll see you next time.